everyone who's joining us online. We are busy with Life of Pi, and we are discussing the theme of um, anthropomorphism. If they ask you to discuss anthropomorphism, let's write that down here. Anthro. Okay, great. That's what he does. What is the other thing he does? What did we say now? So he allows one, he treats the animals as his friends and he talks to them. Um, um, he allows the orangutan to scratch through his hair. Why? So that um, seen as a child. This is, this is what happens in the zoo in his childhood phase. What was the other thing? Um, one more. So sorry. He allows the elephant to search through his pockets. This is what he allows them to do. And so with anthropomorphism, what happens with that is we give the characteristics of humans to animals. Okay, then let's let's move on. Um, there's a con a contradiction throughout the, the novel regarding Pi's tendency to anthropomorphize anthropomorphize animals. On the one hand, he keeps stressing their wildness and their biological features that distinguish them from humans, and on the other hand, he uses figurative language that suggests they have human characteristics. So, what is the contradiction? Um, uh, he keeps stressing their wildness. So, we're still discussing the theme. So, we first discussed how he gives them, allows them to be um, the type of animals they are and what they can do to him, how he interacts with them. And here we talk about the, the contrast. One is he refers to their wildness. Um, you can make notes as we go along. So I'm just giving you an example of how to do that. He refers to their wildness and their biological features that distinguish them from humans. And on the other hand, he uses figurative language to suggest they have human characteristics. So the contradiction is their wildness and their biological features. And then, then he uses figurative language um, to say that they are very similar to humans. For example, for example, when describing his studies of the three-toed sloth, he says, I'm not one given to projecting human traits. And listen, they can even give you this quote and say, discuss this particular throat, um, this particular, um, um, uh, this, this quote, discuss this quote, and when they give you this quote, it means you now have to discuss the characteristics of the, of the animals and, and the contrast and how he relates to the animals. So when, they, when he says, I'm not one given to projecting human traits and emotions to animals, but then ironically, there's the irony, you want to write that down, he does just when, he, just, he does just that, when he describes the slots as yogis deep in meditation of hermites deep in or hermites deep in prayer. So when he refers to the slots, they are deep in meditation and um, or describes them as hermites uh, deep in prayer. Then when we talk about Richard Parker, the contradiction still goes on. We're still under contradiction. Now you're going to make sort of an arrow there that says Richard Parker. What is the contradiction when it comes to um, Richard Parker? How does it? How does the contradiction apply to him? Here we go. It says. Um, when Richard Parker's looks are described, we are not only, sorry, we are told, sorry. 
and sorry my pin file. When Richard Parker looks at this crab, we are told not only about his threatening canines, so his canines, canines, his incredible muscles, but also his formidable sideburns, his stylish goatee, terms we would use for animals. So we believe that Richard Parker is, okay, so we're going to say um, Richard Parker is described as a human being because of the characteristics then we believe that he is a person and because of the pronouns he and him how how do we know how do we how are we led to believe that he is a person there's the pronouns he and him okay then they are talking about um richard parker where are we over here they, they refer to him he's threatening we are told not only about you want to write this down as another trait he's threatening canines his incredible muscles, his formidable sideburns, stylish goatee, and there they give you the, the page numbers. Let me just go back here for you. So we're going to say he's, um, that's his teeth threatening. Canines is um, what are we saying? These incredible muscles. This is how they anthro or how they give this 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 Richard Parker or this animal um, human characteristics. They talk about his um, formidable sideburns, stylish goatee. Here we are. You've got that? Okay, great. So he has a goatee. Um, throughout uh, terms we would only use for humans. Throughout the experience on the lifeboat, Pi is terrified of Richard Parker because he's a wild animal that can kill him. But contradictorily, he keeps talking to Richard Parker as if he were a person. Okay, that's good. So you can say... Um, um, we, we said the goatee, and what else did we say? Um, we refer to his sideburns. Eh? Burns. I'm just writing this down. You can elaborate on that. Um, they are. What, are, what else are they saying? Um, Pi. Pi is afraid of him, but he keeps in contrast. Um, you can say, close this down. In contrast, where are we now? Human animals, human animals, for example, from the studies. Okay, well, we did that. LG pronouns, he, he, him, formidable sideburn, stylish goatee. By is terrified of Richard Parker, he's a wild animal that you kill him. Why? You can ask him, why is he terrified? You can just say he's a wild animal that can kill him. Um, he keeps talking to Richard Parker as if, he's, as if he were a person. He even imagines the tiger's thoughts and gives him dialogue such as when they discuss all the food they must eating. So he, he which part? That can kill him, okay? Then, but he keeps talking to him as if he is a person, and he gives him dialogue, and they discuss the food, like he now has he imagines the uh, what they are discussing. He discusses the food that they are missing.
Okay, let, let's talk about the, the, the theme of anthro just up until now. We're just going to summarize a bit. Anthropomorphism. One, yeah, um, it's when we give, you're going to open that statement if they ask you to discuss this. Open that statement is the, it's when we give characteristics, human characteristics to an animal. Then, um, we, we're thinking that, humans can, that, that animals can act as humans, okay? Um, in the life of Pi, number one, um, he, he treats the animals in the Pondicherry Zoo as close friends, even imagining that they talk. He allows the, there's the mother orangutan to search through his hair, number one, as if, one of her, as if he's one of her children. He allows the elephant to search his pockets. Then there's the contradiction through the novel, and this falls under anthropomorphism. Um, um, contradiction by his tendency to anthropomorphize animals. On the one hand, he keeps stressing their wildness uh, and their biological features. Um, however, he uses figurative language uh, that suggests they have human characteristics. He, he says, I'm not one, of to, um, one to projecting human traits and emotions onto animals. But then, ironically, he does just that when he describes. So when they give you this quote, they can give you this quote and say, discuss this quote in length. You're going to do this whole um, essay, really. Then, then he talks about the slots. So one, he talks about the orangutan. He talks about um, the elephant. He talks about, um, I'll be with you in a minute. Uh, I'm so sorry, can I assist you? Talks about... I'm so sorry. Oh, you have to go back to where the um, set of stairs are, through the door, and then you go straight down the corridor. It's on that side. Thank you. <coughs> okay, I'm sorry, guys. Um, so, so, so those are the animals he, he gives human characteristics to, and then you're going to explain why. Then they, they spend a bit, of, a bit more time on Richard Parker explaining the human characteristics that he gives him. One, he is saying that this animal it has strong muscles, big muscles. Um, he's talking about his... Um, let's go back there so that we can have a look at what we just did. Um, he, they, he talks about his wildness. He's described as a human. We don't know that this is... I, an animal is talking about, he refers to the, he uses pronouns for him, such as he and him. When he talks about in, him, the, he talks about his threatening canines, his incredible muscles, so that's all human characteristics. He talks about his goatee, he talks about his sideburns. And so up until that point, we are um, almost led to believe that this is a human being he, he's talking about. Then he he is very afraid, I'm going to use that word, um, of this animal because he's wild and this animal can kill him. But the contrast in this is, is that he keeps on um, talking to him. He has dialogue with him. And then he talks about, um, I'm going to maybe put this in here. He has, um, keeps talking to him. Oh, let's do that. Um, to Richard Parker, um, he has dialogue with him about what? The food they are missing out on. Okay, so so that's the, the discussion. So, so we now know he talks about the slots, he talks about the orangutan, he talks about the elephant, um, what's the other one? I keep missing the one. Um, and, okay, fine. I, I think we, we are okay. And then talk obviously about Richard Parker. Now let's go back here. We did that. When Richard Parker looks as he described, and on his threatening came out. Okay, there we go. Now let's talk about it. It is only when we, when do we know? It is only when we hear the second story without the animals that they realize that Richard Parker is symbolic of Pi himself and that this is why he has anthropomorphized him. Okay, so we're going to say, um, we're going to say 
Richard Parker. Uh, let's get that right. Richard Parker equals pi symbolizes pi in the second story. Story without animals. And how do we know that? Let's let's read on. See what it does. And then this is this is why anthropomorphous morphized him. I don't know why they call it that. Okay. Pi places all the awful things he has had to do to survive. Okay. So why why does he anthropomorphize this animal? So because he places all the the evil things he needed to do, he put places it now on this animal because he might have been the one to kill the other animals in in the um, in the lifeboat to survive. And then he kept on having discussions with himself, and he kept on training himself, really disciplining himself to get through this. Now let's read what they are saying. For example, in the first story, it is not. He who killed the blind Frenchman, it is Richard Parker. Right. Write that down in the first story. It's not he who killed the blind Frenchman, and the Frenchman was, um, was that the zebra? By laying the blame for the bestial things he had to do on a predatory, onto a predatory wild animal, Pi protects himself from the horrors of which he is capable. Okay. Okay, fine. I think this is noteworthy. So, in the second story, um, Pi anthropomorphized Richard Parker because of all the horrific things he needed to do to survive. In the first story, it is not he who killed the blind Frenchman, but it is Richard Parker. By laying the blame on the bestial things, or for the bestial things they had to do onto a predatory wild animal, Pi, Pi protects himself. So they can ask you how in the second story did Pi protect himself by laying the blame on a bestial um, uh, figure or figurative animal. Then um, this also shows us that humans are equally capable of savagery and cruelty, a very important point. Humans are also capable of savagery and cruelty. So we are actually now talking about um, the second story. Okay, so we are going to say Pi um, puts blame on RP for all the um, awful things he did to survive what else can we say um, from this we learn that humans are also oh and that's also to protect himself sorry guys Sentiment. So, um, before we go to humans are capable, we want to say, I'm so sorry, good day, sir. I think you have to go through, you know where the staircase is? The, the stairs. Go back there, then you go straight down the corridor. I think he's on that side. That's where the police office is. If it's not on that side, Let's ask the police office. Then here, the next thing we want to do is humans. We actually want to say um, it was, it was, maybe it was he, it was Pi, who killed the Frenchman. 
Yeah, let's let's do that. It's maybe it was Hayuki of the Frenchman in the second story. I want to go back there just to make sure that we know where the Frenchman is. I am almost certain the Frenchman is. We discussed all of this last time. Um, Richard Parker is his youngest. Found it. Let's have a look to see. Just checking your notes. I think the Frenchman is the zebra. For animals, here we go. Allegory, the color orange. Um, Richard Parker, religion, da 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 da. We discussed the, the color orange is very important. You can actually just, just go over this again. This is very important. What, what, what the color orange represents and everything else that represented the color, what it stood for and what it represented. Remember, it actually represents faith and survival. Um, where's the other thing? There's your long term. Let's go okay, have a look at this. Don't worry, we are doing well today. Then we, we also said here, oh, that humans, now we're going to go there. Um, by laying these old things, and only predated what animal is, which is capable of. Humans and animals sometimes have to commit terrible deeds in order to stay alive. Humans are equally capable of savagery and cruelty. Both humans and animals are um, sometimes have to commit terrible deeds in order to stay alive. Okay, so we're gonna go. Um, let's do make the next page. Okay, let me go there now. Okay, um, humans, as I always said, humans can commit savagery and cruel deeds to survive. Then the next point would be both humans and animals. You want to write this down. Sometimes have to commit terrible deeds in order to stay alive. Pai says that animals have two imperatives. To avoid enemies and to get food and water. Okay, two imperatives. Okay, here we're going to go. Let's do this again. To survive, both humans and animals are... Um, Commit to terrible deeds. Okay, so that's that's how they um or that's that's how he is comparing. Um, let's write that down. Both humans and animals um have to um commit terrible deeds. Okay, um, let's go. This terrible. Deeds. We're talking about survival, eh? Um, to survive. What was the next point we said? Um, stay with me, please, Jade. The next point was Pais and Earth. Oh, animals have two imperatives to avoid enemies and to get food and water. Two things that animals need to do. Animals. Um, to impair uh, right? one is um, avoid enemies and two uh, get food and water that's what they want to do to survive so it depends on which en enemies were on the boat I hope it's all starting to make a bit more sense to you. On the lifeboat, this is the point to which Pi is stripped down. In the battle of survivals, humans have to become like animals. In the battle of survival, humans have to become like animals. Then, you can write that down as well. Make it another point. So, you can make points as we go, as we go along. Now, there are clues in the first 
story that Richard Parker is actually Pi. So we need to say how do we know that Richard Parker is Pi? Let's do that. Just as a note. So how um, and I'm going to say in the first story after in retrospect really after you look back um, do we know we are talking about uh, it's giving us clues that me that Richard Parker I think we have a challenge with the, the Wi-Fi just gonna have a look at that quickly okay that RP is pi let's look at that for example Parker becomes constipated and only diff uh, Def, what's that word? Defecates once a month. Same as the same as Pi does. Okay, so he's constipated, only goes out once a month, the same as Pi. At one point, Pi is so hungry that when he gobbles down the raw fish, he says, This noisy, frantic, frantic, unchewing, wolfing down of mine was exactly the way Richard Parker ate. Okay, so they ate the same way, frantic. Um, he only is constipated and Pi also only went out once a month. It's exactly what Richard, Richard Parker did. So those are clues that tells us this is, this is the deal. He, and he was gulping down his food, gobbling down his, this raw fish. He says it's the same way exactly the way Richard Parker ate and that's if you read that on page um, triple two, 222 now the other creature on the lifeboat whom Pi anthropomorphizes is orange juice the pronoun used here is she whilst the vicious hyena is described as it okay you can see the difference she is very personal and it is say, almost very impersonal so me. the other but i can't hear you say, i can't hear you i don't know maybe it's me no i, think, I can't hear you yeah i think there is a problem let me just go in and out again Courtney, can you hear him? I'll be with you now no, so I can't. Can I sent a message now, but it's not. I, no, don't I, know. I, I should go on to I sent a message now, but it's not. I don't know. I should go on to I thought I'm the only one. Okay, okay, it's fine. Let me get, get out. Yes, sir. Okay, can you guys hear me now? Yes, sir. Okay, great. Sorry, I. <laughs> There might have been a problem with the with the Wi-Fi. Let's go back here. So, um, are we here? Are we okay with this? Let's let's go back here. I'm going to go back here and then and then read it to you again. How do we know there are clues in the story that Parker is actually Richard Parker is actually Pi? For example. Parker becomes constipated. I think we've discussed that. Um, let's write that down. Um, RP becomes uh, constipated at labor. <laughs> um, only defecates. Um, once a month, God never, and then um, oh, you can say the same as that's a clue, and then the way they gobble food. Um, they gobble the food down is the same. Or look at page there we go if you have the book with you 
Um, now let's let's finish up. Let's go here. The other creature on the lifeboat is orange juice. Um, you can again see the theme of orange. Um, the other creature would be orange. Sorry, sir, can you orange juice? Bit. 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 There we Thank go. But that part becomes constipated. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. There we go. And it only defecates once a month. That's the same as pi. I'm just say the way they viciously. Gobble the food down again. And vicious is what they mean here. Okay, let's let's help myself. There we go. Viciously. The way they viciously gobble the food down. And that tells, gives us indication, it's the same way in which Pi ate. Then orange juice we know is the orangutan. Um, he refers, she gets a personal pronoun. Um, he re refers to her as she, whereas with the hyena, is this the French guy? Guys, please go and read this book or go check this out. Um, he refers to it. To it as it. Which doesn't make it that personal. We can go back there, don't worry. It's described as it. It is clear that Pai chose an orangutan to represent his mother precisely because biologically apes are the closest species to humans. Okay, so the orangutan um, is um, relates to as his mother biologically. Um, they look closest to humans. Okay, um, and then his mother's love and compassion kept her human on the lifeboat. And she never degenerated into a bestial steak in the way that the, that the cook and pie did. Okay, great. So, so she reminds him of his mother's love and compassion. compassion. That's what you want to say. Uh, he kept her on the lifeboat. She never got into a bestial state. Okay. So we're going to talk about her as um, reminds him of his mother's love and compassion um, um, she never degenerated to say um, lowered into a bestial state.
she never degenerated into a bestial state. Let's see. Okay, we have a bit of a challenge here. Sorry, our, our Wi-Fi is going in and out, so it's playing around with us a bit. Can you guys still hear me? Courtney, you can just send me a note or something. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, great. So we have a bit of a challenge with um, Wi-Fi over here. Um, and I'm going to see what I can do in terms of... Okay, there we go. Uh, maybe maybe let's write in black if it doesn't keep me if it doesn't help me or if it doesn't want to work with me okay fine so um never ah uh, d that was the one we said d j rated into a Bestial state. Okay, that's fine. Um, like pi and the hyena, or the. Uh, let's just go back here. The cook. Pi and the cook. Okay. So that covers that portion. Let's talk about. I definitely want to talk about the issue, the theme of fate. Um, do you guys want to take a break? I'm just asking. Can we go on? Want to take a five minute break? Let me know. Can we can we go can we go on? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What is that? Yes, to one. Yes, yes. Should we go on? Yes, to going on. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yes, to going yes. on. Okay, let's do this. Let's let's talk about the, the theme of faith. Pi's faith in God plays a significant role in helping him to survive. So remember, your next topic that you are going to start with is the issue of faith. I'm going to clear this. Um, it's the next theme. We're going to be discussing or believing God. Okay, so here we go. Let's see how many days was he adrift. I think that's important to note. They may ask you that in just a short question. 22, 20, uh, two, uh, 227 days adrift and starving on the lifeboat. Unlike some people who only turn to God when they are in need. Here we go. Pi has always been sp a spiritual person deeply spiritual person from early childhood he feels a connection with the divine a connection that goes beyond religion and ritual so um, he's always had a, um, been a deeply spiritual person that's what you want to say and you want to say from early childhood he feels a connection to the divine or with the divine in God one you want to say um, always been deeply spiritual. Remember, we're talking about Paya and um, from early childhood. Um, had a connection. with the divine is it divine or divine let's go here we go um, then um pi is an unconventional approach okay so they can talk about his unconventional approach maybe you want to put that down um to religion um they can ask you explain his unconventional approach uh, approach to religion. So I'm going to say unconventional approach to, I'm just going to put that like that, 
How is it unconventional? Here we go. Most people believe that their own religion is the only path to God and salvation. They see other faiths as false. Pi, on the other hand, is influenced by three religions. One, Hinduism, Christianity, and Islam. So he believes he has uh, faith in all three beliefs. So we have Hinduism, Christianity, and Islam. He has three beliefs. Um, Hinduism, Christianity, and Islam. When you have that, you must always ask yourself how how and why was he influenced um, like that? Or who influenced him like that? Is it load shedding? How rude. Okay, we're going to go on. Um, because I am recording and they can always get the recording. So thank you so much. Let's quickly have a look at this. That means my um, the class won't be able to join me, but I can record for them. Um, let's quickly have a look at what they are saying next. Uh, okay, here we go. The, 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 uh, so we, you can start off by saying he believes he has three beliefs or, or three sets of religion he believes in, Hinduism, Christianity, and Islam. Then again, we're going to go up to the first line. Most people believe that their own, their own religion is the only path to God. Okay? In salvation, they, the other faiths are false. Pi, on the other hand, is influenced by three religions. So he does not believe that all the faiths or other faiths are false. When the three religious leaders of his faith, Pi calls them the three wise men. Okay, fine. Who does he refer to as, a, you want to write down three wise men? Challenge Pi to choose only one faith and living according to its precepts only. Pi responds, I just want to love God. Let's quickly have a look at that. Maybe I don't want to use that. Maybe I want to be here. Um, maybe I should just open a document. Sorry about this, guys. We have low chilling. Um, are you guys still online? catch up with us. Okay. Three religions. That, that's great. Awesome. Thank you. So we have three religions. We have Hinduism. We have, um, and maybe I should write this, make this bigger. Yeah. Christianity. And we have Islam. Uh, Islam that. Um, is influenced um, by whom? These um, three wise men. Um, and then they, they want him to choose. To choose one. Pi, however, says, um, I only want to love God. Is that what he says? Let's see if it's true to it, to if I can remember correctly. Um, if there's only one scratch, oh, okay, that's interesting. Sponsor just want, oh, I, I just want to love God. Pilots believes that religion provides a way to express love for God and to feel closer to the creator of the universe. So he believes that religion provides a way to express love for God. Uh, uh, I did he say, I just want to love God. I just want to love God 
and that um, religion provides a way to express love for God. That's what he believes religion is meant to do. Okay, and, and this, maybe you should make a note of that. If you have the booklet, and I'm sure you have a soft copy of it, of it you can go to page 75. Okay, Pai does not feel uh, as if religions are really all that different from one another, even if they have different ways of seeing the world. Remember, we are talking about Pai's unconventional way uh, or, or perception of religion. So, Pai does not feel as if religion, uh, religions are really all that different from one another, even if they have different ways of seeing uh, the world. This is why he says, if there is only one nation in the sky, shouldn't all passports be valid for it? If they give you that statement, they talk about one nation in the sky, and shouldn't all passports be valid for it as per page nine, 79, it means that he's saying um, all religions may be different from one another. It, it does not feel as if religions are really all that different from one another even if they have different ways of seeing the world. This is why he says, if there's only one nation in the sky, shouldn't all passports be valid for it? He often compares events that take place to stories from the different religions. He also thanks the deities from all three religions whenever something good happens to him. So he's out on the boat and he does all this religious activity. He prays in the morning and he does his thing. And then he prays to all three gods, really. So he thanks the deities from all three religions whenever something good happens. Often compares events that take place to stories from different religions. In other words, they are different stories, but they all have the same outcome, really. Let's talk about the issue of territory. I'm just giving you an overview, but it's important for you to actually go over this yourself. Again, you have this document, you can go over it. But I mean, this is really giving us a very, very good overview of what's happening in the book, and especially the themes that they are discussing. Another one is the theme of territory. Let me, let me tell you how you need to answer and approach, I'm sorry, your questions. It doesn't matter what question they ask you. These facts will always be the same. They will, so they may ask you another thing, but then you're going to talk about the color orange, you're going to talk about the orangutan, you're going to talk about Pai, Pai being able to survive. He was out there for 227 days, how he prays to his gods. And you can write the same thing over and over again with a different outcome because they have to mark facts. And once you put facts down there, every essay has the same facts, really. But it's how you steer the essay to a point that really gives it its, its flesh or validity. But in the interim, when you're going to say, um, he referred to the orangutan as his mother because she was so soft and she played with him um, with his hair while he was in the zoo. Boom, boom, boom. That's three marks for her essay. You get that, because those are facts. When you refer to, for instance, his religion, how did he survive out on the boat? You're going to refer to his religion, um, how he believed in God, how he practiced every day, and his three religions, and these three men that influenced him. Then you're going to say, how else did he survive? Oh, there was the color orange, everything was orange on the boat. Blum, bam, 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 bam. Then you're going to say things like, oh, you're going to mark the issue of territory in this instance. You're going to talk about how he gave each animal a different characteristic. Those are all marks, and that is what really gives your essay the weight it requires in order to get marks. Let's talk about how he marked territory in, in, um, 
in on the boat and that was a very important thing to do in order for you to survive the theme of territory let's go and you can use the same um, method we used over here just see if it still allows me to write because if the normally when this is, oh I can't go right but this is going to give us a bit more um, give you guys a bit more clarity we we'll seem to be doing better on this pair on, on this document and over there. Now, guarding one's territory is shown to be a common trait throughout the animal kingdom. You know that a dog will always pee wherever he feels that's his territory, or any animal actually does that. Now, all anim animals have a territory that they mark in some way, usually with a urine. Okay, so all animals mark their territory. That's what you can start by saying. Um, and that's a mark. Usually, come now by P. Or if you want to say what they P. Now, um, the dominant or alpha animal usually has control over the boundaries and size of the territory. Like there's a dun, uh, there's an alpha animal. That's the dominant one. I'm just going to do that. As the control. Um, number two, what, do, what are they saying? Oh, over what? Over boundaries and size of territory. As the control over boundaries and size. Territory. Territory. Okay, great. Then maybe I want to do this. Hold up. Give me a minute. I maybe want to do that here. Yeah. And maybe let's do that. Oh, let's tap that. Okay, that's fine. Okay, next up. What are we saying? Um, one of Pai's arguments as to why animals in zoos are better off is that they do not have to defend their territories from predators as they, as the cages become their territories. Okay, in zoos, their cages become their territories. We can do that. We can rewrite that in zoos. Um, the cages become the territories, territories and they do not have to fight for it okay um from predators as they can become the territories okay pi also describes human homes oh as their territories which suggests then in this respect, humans are similar to animals. Okay, how are humans similar to animals? We're going to say um, human homes um, are their territories and in this aspect, animals are similar to humans. Do this one. Human homes are the territory. Okay, fine. I'm going to do that. And I'm going to do this. Okay, let's see if there's anything else. Um, we are just building a case in terms of territory and what happened. When Pi is stranded on the lifeboat with Richard Parker, establishing the borders of Pi's territories. 
territory becomes imperative to his survival. He can only do this if he first proves himself to be the alpha male. Okay, great. I like that. So we can start at the back. Pi has to mark his territory. For territory in order to survive with this animal. But he first has to establish himself. I'm doing great summaries today. He first establishes himself as the alpha male. I call alpha animal. Because girls can be alpha animals too. <laughs> This is how you get your marks. You literally build a case first. Okay? Are you okay? So, he first, however, he, however, let's do that. He, however, he first, oh, do it the other way, has to establish himself as the alpha animal, has to prove himself. That's how it works in the animal world. If you have dogs, you prove to them that you are the alpha animal in your relationship. We can do that, male, if you want to. And remember, there's a page number attached with 168 if you want to go and read over that. The nice thing about this type of summaries is you can just go to those page numbers if you need more information or you want to add a bit more flesh to it. Now, as time progresses, the life world becomes just like a zoo enclosure where Pi and Richard Parker are trapped. There we go, on page 188. So it becomes just like a zoo. The one cannot cross over into the other animal's territory. Um, it becomes the lifeboat. Zoom. Um, let's be clever about this. Is. Enclosure where pine. Okay, to park in there. A zoo where each one is caged to their own space. Um, um, and then you can read about this. I think it's page, what did it say, 188 over here? Yeah, page 188. Um, Pi uses whenever, when, so whenever Richard Parker, or whenever Richard Parker tries to come over into his space, he'll blow up a whistle or he pees somewhere it, that's the way. So, so go and read about how he blows a whistle to mark territory and the P. <laughs> P. Let's see what this is. And you can even see that, I think when you watch the movie, you will see how he uses the whistle. Okay, we, we still have a little bit of work to do. I'm really happy with that. But I think this is also important for you to note. Um, and this would possibly be the end of where we're going to. So one of the, maybe two more things that we need to discuss and I mean, that's very easy, is the one is the survival and the world to survive. Um, yeah, this table shows what Pi does to survive, okay? He, adapt, he adapts to his surroundings. Don't, don't worry, don't start writing about this because we're gonna finish off, but I'm just using this as an example, and then we can come back and discuss this whole thing again. You remember valuable lessons? Um, he, 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 for instance, Pi's father teaches them 
the less matter wild animal is dangerous. He does this to ensure their survival. Um, the, his will to hold on to hope and then tells us what's happening. Do not give up the will to love except you have nothing to lose. Um, for instance, here when Pai realizes Richard Park is on the boat, he finds the courage to look for supplies, knowing that, that he is no match for the tiger. The, the nice thing about the summary is you can go to those pages if you haven't read the whole book yet. But these particular pages will show to you or maybe point out to you where to go look for those details. Um, you have to stay active. You have to depend on yourself. Do not rely on outside help. Look for positives. Do not count the days. Go one step at a time. Keep your sense of humor. Compete to survive. Hold on to your faith. Okay? So if you go to this one, for instance, hold on to your faith. Faith is linked to Pi's will to survive. He prays five times a day and maintains as many religious rituals as he can while on the lifeboat. Each time he catches a sea creature, he thanks God for it and he prays for its soul. He tells himself, so long as God is with me, I will not die. So, so you hold on to your faith and then again on page 148, they give you this particular um, um, example. Um, that's that's about it, and I mean we can we will go through this particular section. We will need one more class with that, and then we will exactly tell you who's who, who's the protagonist. Um, here we go, and they give you characteristics of Pi. Here's the adult Pi. Here's the author. Here's his teachers, Satish Kumar, his biology his biology teacher. Um, he's a polio, polio survivor. He's odd looking. Triangle, triangle shaped body, scientific, he's an atheist. Then there is, um, his father was also his teacher. He's a Catholic priest. He, uh, he loves him now. He's kind and he is religious. He's religious. Sorry, this is Father Martin. Father Martin. Then there's Satish Kumar. You'll see a Satish Kumar over here, who's his biology teacher, two Kumars. And then there's Satish Kumar, which is the Muslim Suf, um, Sufi, he's the baker. Um, then there's the Hindu Pandit, Patel's family spiritual leader. He was offended. Okay. Then you will see, this is what his family looks like. Santosh Patel, by his father, who was a zoo owner. He dies in 1977 when the ship sinks. He's cautious, not religious. He's modern, but he's firm. Jita Patel is by his mother. She's killed by the cook on the lifeboat. Um, she's a book lover, calm, loving, gentle, but firm and courageous. Listen, if if you need to, if at this point you need to um, pause the video to just look at this particular page and make your notes, please do that. Then there's Ravi, Pai's older brother. Again, he also dies on the same um, ship. There's Francis Adirubasami, Pai's honorary uncle, connects the author to Pai, called Mama G, who is a respected uncle and a champion swimmer. Last but not least, what do we have on the boat? So you will see that the young Pai experiences all of this on the boat. You will see this little angle, uh, little arrow goes from year to year. Who, who does he get on the boat? Who are these characters on the boat? It's Richard Parker, uh, the apparent antagonist. Although, although my English is firmly up, uh, there's the protagonist in India who is the young Pi, and then here Richard Parker is the uh, um, antagonist. Um, it's Pi's alter ego on the lifeboat. He weighs 450 pounds. He's nine feet long. He's a carnivore. He's ferocious and alpha male. That is then submissive to Pi. Then you have orange juice over here, who is then, um, uh, um, what's the word I'm, I'm looking for? Um, compared to his mother, Jita Patel, the orangutan on the lifeboat is killed by the hyena. She's maternal, she is human like, um, she's lonely and seasick. She's courageous. Then there's the zebra, the Taiwanese sailor. 
on the lifeboat again killed by the hyena who's over here gentle young beautiful exotic injured tormented and vulnerable so they give you the characteristics of the zebra then there's a the hyena who is the french cook again this is also on the lifeboat french cook castaway blind frenchman killed by by richard parker um he's ugly violent dangerous and i mean that's everything a hyena is carnivore cannibalistic he's murderous and de desperately hungry there we go so those are all the characters on um, the ship or on this boat with him. Once you have this down, you really have a very good overview of this particular book and what to look out for. So uh, for today, we're going to finish this particular um, section of the story here. I hope this helps you a bit and gives you a better understanding of what to look out for and, and what this is about. In the meantime, what I what I firmly and strongly suggest is that you go over some old papers, look at the shortlisted questions that they have in there, as well as essay questions, and then let's see if you can make a bit more sense of it now. Okay, I think that's it. Thank you so much, everyone. I'm about to start with my you, first Sam. additional class. Thank you, Sam. You're welcome. You too. Enjoy your day, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you, you too. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. I hope it helped you a bit. Please go over the work. Do you have this somewhere on your phone? No, But the documents I sent. Yes, sir. But I'm not in the computer. You ain't in my mother's office. But then your mother's sitting with it. Do you speak to your mother? Yes, but she didn't tell me and she told me last night and she did but the, the documents are on a phone. The stuff that I'm working through, I sent on the group. Do you have an email? Mm -hmm. Do you have a laptop at home? No. Oh my word. I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. 